Food manufacturers pour a lot of effort into creating the best label to catch the consumer's eye. From the text on the label to the material it's made of, every facet was chosen to draw as much attention as possible. Studies into the science of product labeling have found some interesting relationships. Minor details, like the color of an apple on the label, can trigger responses in our brain that cause us to taste the food in a different way. We might associate a green apple with the sour Granny Smith variety and believe that we're tasting something sour, even if there weren't any Granny Smith apples in the food to begin with. The branding is important too. Researchers have found that a low-calorie product from an unhealthy brand was liked more than a low-calorie product from a healthy brand. Our minds work in strange ways, which can be taken advantage of by food manufacturers so that you'll buy their products. One of the many important facets of the food label to be aware of is the flavor statement. Chapter 21, subsection 101.22 of the Federal Code of Regulations, or 21 CFR 101.22, lists the many rules and regulations pertaining to the labeling of flavors on the foods we buy. If a company wants their product to be associated with any one flavor, which is legally defined as the characterizing flavor, they need to abide by 21 CFR 101.22. Flavors are regarded as important trade secrets, so the FDA does not require the chemical composition of the flavor to be displayed. All they need to do is identify if the flavoring is natural or artificial in the ingredient statement. On the front of the label, however, things get a little trickier. To start with, if a flavor is made from just one compound or ingredient, it doesn't need to be labeled as artificial or natural flavor. Instead, it will be labeled by a common name. So salt is simply labeled as salt or vanilla as vanilla. However, if the product's characterizing flavor isn't present in the product at levels deemed high enough to qualify for common name labeling, and if they also use a natural flavor derived from that ingredient, the product must be labeled as naturally flavored. So vanilla would become natural vanilla flavored. Additionally, if the product flavor is sourced from the characterizing ingredient and flavor from another source, it will be labeled as with other natural flavor. Now, let's talk about artificial flavor. Is artificial flavor the flavor boogeyman that people are justified in avoiding? Was artificial flavor grown in a lab by mad scientists looking to take over the world by injecting their mind control agents into our foods? No! A flavor is labeled as artificial if none of the characterizing flavor is from the actual source of the flavor that it's imitating, or if the source is not one that is deemed a natural source by the FDA. The term is used to separate flavors that are from the source of the flavor it is characterizing itself as, versus flavors that are simulating the taste of that characterizing flavor. So yes, some artificial flavors were born in a lab but more often than not, they are chemically similar or identical to the natural flavor they're simulating. A company may also choose to label their flavor as artificial if they're using a natural flavor to simulate the characterizing flavor, but the flavor they use is not from the same source. So an apple product flavored with, say, pear flavor that resembles apple flavors could be labeled as artificial flavor or naturally apple type flavored. The type signifies that the flavor tastes like apple, but is not derived from any apple product, although the flavors used are still natural. Things get a little more complex if the product has more than one characterizing flavor, like a banana strawberry smoothie. If the banana and strawberry flavors are both natural, then they can label them together as natural banana and strawberry flavors. The same if the flavors are artificial. Once three or more ingredients show up on the front label, the rules relax a little. For instance, instead of calling out every single flavor in a fruit punch, they may label it as artificially flavored fruit punch. That about wraps it up for today. I hope you've learned a lot about a very important part of the ingredient statement on the foods you eat. There's a lot that goes into the labeling of natural and artificial foods. And neither one is inherently good or evil. They're just ways of ensuring that the consumer knows what's going into the foods that they eat. But in the end, it's up to the consumer to decide what they purchase and what they eat. Thanks for watching.